everyone, and welcome to the HDL Hammerdown Truck Series for the Wisconsin 100 here in West Allis, Wisconsin, here in the United States, just outside of Milwaukee, at the Milwaukee Mile. I am Kevin Young. I am joined here in the booth by Car with Carmen Sienna, and we're going to provide a great 100-lap race in the trucks around the Milwaukee Mile. It's going to be a great, interesting show here. These trucks have gone here in the past. Should provide some great racing here. But, Carmen, what are the drivers looking out for here tonight? These trucks are uh, they are a handful here at Milwaukee that we've seen already. As you see a little bit in the background, turn four is going to be a significant problem area. It's a very bumpy, abrasive track, um, but you're going to see a, little, a lot of physicality tonight. These trucks have a lot of sway into them. It's a matter of finding your limits and not touching over them tonight, and that's going to be very tricky the further down the field you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a uh, fight for what you can get situation. Kind of old short track racing. Got to try to pick your lines, pick your spots, and hope someone isn't there waiting in your line because track position is going to be key is what I guess I'm trying to say here on the point. So looking at the clock, we got about 3 minutes and 30 and change to go here before we get ready for qualifying. And right now on the top of the board, we thought we were going to see him this week as he was going to possibly be out for two weeks. But John Hagen tops the board, finished second in Daytona, and is looking to try to get the win here tonight in the Milwaukee Mile. But obviously with qualifying and a race still away, he can top the practice times, but it's not always indicative of winning the race. Followed close behind uh, John Hagen is Pacey Wygent, Joel Rodriguez, Jonathan Adams, and Byron Jones. Jones will be your top five here in practice. His practice has just gotten under three minutes. You see John Hagen in pit lane, going to end off practice that way. Adam's the fastest truck on track at the moment. Mm -hmm. Driving the 83 for Carolina Beagle Racing. It's going to be very exciting. Yep. A lot of different drivers at the front of the field tonight. Yeah. You got an interesting face because last week it was a strong, strong performance by last week's race winner. And we'll see. I think it was Parker, so I'm not mistaken. And we're looking in the same spot right now in the same regard, looking to try to keep that momentum going. Right now he's got pretty good times on the board right now. But obviously, again, we'll see how confident he feels as the night goes on. Because I know I hinted at the um, in the uh, A-squared finale broadcast on Sunday, and we heard this also last Tuesday at home so as well. Some of these drivers didn't have this track bought, and some of these drivers haven't put many laps on this track. So for a lot of drivers, it's trial, well, not a lot of drivers, but it's a good chunk of the field at the very least. It's trial by fire in trying to figure out how this truck works around this track, and this 55-minute practice session has been a blessing in trying to figure out what the truck can do and how they can wheel it around this at a fast rate. Yeah, right now we're following a group of drivers right now. Kelly Hyatt leading this pack of drivers here. Right now sitting eighth fastest in the three truck. Mm -hmm. Pulling double duty here. Did not have a great time last night in that three car for Lady Liberty Motorsports. Mm -hmm. Looking to turn it around here in the truck series. I will say, from what I heard, it was an interesting showing last night in the uh, cup cars around here. But the trucks, a little less speed, a little less power, a little less performance. Should make it a bit of an easier time to wheel them around here than it would be in a cup car. Uh, with about a minute to go here, we're still focusing on Kelly Height here. As multiple drivers are out on the track right now taking laps, I'm going to say at least half the field. So real estate is kind of thin of where you want to be in trying to get a clean run. It's not going to be the easiest to do with a minute to go, but with a lap being 30 seconds, if you cross the line about now, you should only get me one more lap to really figure out what you got. So as warm up is about to come to a close here with 40 seconds to go, uh, Carmen, you can do me a favor here and share your screen. It would make my life a little bit easier on the very end. But we'll get ready to finish this up here, and we'll get ready for qualifying. And for those who are new, qualifying is going to be a um, one-lap qualifying run, five minutes, so you don't get those two laps. You got to get on your warm-up, go out there, put the hammer down, similar to the name, and get the lap you can get. I have to refresh your Discord, because I'm, I'm already sharing mine. Oh, yep. Yep, you are. Thank you. My mistake on that one. <laughs> Didn't hear the notification. But anyway, though, uh, qualifying about to begin here. Looking at the chat right now, we got at least one person in the chat calling, thinking Cali Height, as we were for folks on her a minute ago, favorite to win this race. And a few other drivers saying they feel like they got more speed out of it. Let's see what they can get as we watch Byron Jones here finish up, and we'll get on the qualifying. So as qualifying begins here, 
We'll see who the lucky driver that pulls out first is going to be. The mad scramble, it looks like, I want to say John Hagen. He jumped in the pit lane first, but looking at the board, yep, it will be John Hagen. John Hagen will be the first one out of the pit lane here. Fall close by Casey Ellis and Jonathan Adams will be the three here as we'll actually ride on board here with said 81 track of John Hagen. And he'll let us, he'll be the torchbearer. He'll be the time setter as long as he doesn't invalidate. He will be the time, they will set the time that the other drivers will have to beat. Coming off a of four here, getting close to that wall, and away he goes. Want to get deep, get right on that darker part of the track there, really get low, pinch the throttle off, and then get on the accelerator here. A little bit of kick there. Car wasn't fully planned a little, but it shouldn't really hamper the speed all that much. Going nice and low here. As he comes off a of four here, gets a good run off. We'll see what time he sets. Across the board, and across the line, I should say, and on the board with a 29.91. As the rest of the cars begin to file in here, we'll see if that time can hold. And race for the preliminary first few cars, it's looking good. So Ron Boy with the 94 as the 94 car is about to finish. Actually, I think taking a warp lap here, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, it was just a finish lap there for Pendel. And he'll go P3. But still a little bit of ways away from John Hagen's time. Pacey Wingen, uh hey, yeah, gets a uh, YGen, I should say, finished up. Now we'll ride on board with the 19 here. Who actually is driving the 42 of Parkhurst as there's been a little number glitch, but that's still the 42 for the most part here. And he'll cross the line to start a lap here. We'll see what he can do. Looking to try to be a 29.91. But it should be worth noting that only one driver has broken into that 29 barrier, and that is John Hagen. Every other car is above the 30 second mark here. So we'll see if the 42 can get in the good company and join in that range. Cross the line, only gonna be good enough for fifth. So now we'll cut to the 40 truck of Nathan Estep as they finish up a lap here, 30.716 for their troubles. Be good enough for 20th. Looking to see who else is on runs here. Bobby Blowers just started a lap, and that's who we will cut to in the Grave, Grave Digger inspired truck. We saw it last week at Homestead. Looking to try to get a good run here in that 34. Did lead a couple laps at Homestead. Looking to keep that momentum going in the right direction. Has to try to beat a 29.91. Get on pole here. He comes across the line here. We'll see where he slots it. Going to be good enough for 12th, just between Pelletier Sharp and Kevin Feimster. So he gives the wall a little tap there going into one. And looking through the board here, he should be that as qualifying has still about a minute and some change left to go. But with only two drivers, Zach McBride and Caleb Eichler, not putting down times yet. They could still theoretically go out there with a minute to go, but the likelihood of that happening is slim, as we've seen Zach Bride and Caleb Eichler elect not to qualify at least the past couple weeks. So I think it's within good saying that I think we're going to see John Hagen take pole position. Both Hagen and Wyjet looked really good last night in the Cup Series race. Bad luck fell upon both of them. Uh, took them out of contention from the race win last night, so a chance to redeem themselves here in the Truck Series tonight. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good redemption drive for at least one of those drivers at the very least. Maybe both. They both get on the podium. Some would consider it at least a success. About 20 seconds to go here in qualifying. Looking through the chat right now, one driver, one person already wants to go back to Miami, but... You get to experience the good Midwestern colds of Milwaukee, at least in the virtual world here tonight. So as qualifying is finished up here, 
So we see one driver taking a little preemptive war up there. And that will be checkered flag out in the session. It will be John Hagen taking pole position. All righty. So as the cars begin the grid here, we'll give you a quick rundown of the starting order here in one second. And we'll start off with John Hagen, our pole sitter. He will be on the front row with Pacey Wygent in that number double zero. Moving down further down the grid, we got Joel Rodriguez and Jonathan Adams making up row number two. Mark Parkhurst and Angel Santiago making up row three. Christopher Pendel and Callie Height in row four. Dean Clavett and Jeremy Brayo, Daytona, Daytona winner Jeremy Brejo, making up row number five. Row six, we got Alyssa Pelletier-Sharp and Bobby Blowers. Row seven, Kevin Themester and Alfred Denny. Row eight, Lily Frazier and David Pugh. Row 9, Stefan Oberstadt and Byron Jones. Row 10, Patrick Oberstadt and Blake Henderson. Row 11, actually, was, yeah, row, oh, oh, yeah, we got to quickly go back to row 11 here. Yep, Nathan Estep and Tyler Woodward. Row 12 will be Scott Panetsky and Nicholas Don Francesco. Row 13, Austin Mongold and Jonathan Smeal. Row 14, Casey Ellis and James Wright. Row 15, Richard G Richard Gonzalez and Greg Pillar, uh, Piller. Row 16, Zach McBride and Michael Saccone. And then row 17, last row of the grid, Richard Ode and Caleb Eichler will make up the last row here. So that's how the 34 trucks will shake up here. We'll have one more extra lap here of warm up here to allow the field to kind of get their bearings. We'll take a quick look at the current conditions on the track. Temperature is 75 degrees out here. Doesn't really fit the October night, but different time settings for that. Humidity of one degree, a wind of north, north wind at two miles an hour, and it's a partly cloudy racetrack. So a picture perfect day here for a race. So we'll get one more lap of warm up here. Again, thank you for joining us here on ABN1. Thank you for tuning in. We're just about to get going here for the Wisconsin 100 here for the HDL Hammer Down Truck Series. Should be a fun one here. And there's a lot of drivers you think could take this win here. At the top of the screen, you'll see the running order one more time. Scroll through here on the top. But a lot of favorites here to take this win. It's going to be very hard to differentiate who could be the strongest truck. Go through three and four here. Pace car will be pulling off this time by. Pace car is in. Green flag is out. And the Wisconsin 100 is underway. As we come off the backstretch right now, John Hagen's able to clear into one, but you can see just how racy they're getting. Track position is key around here, and cars beginning to fight for the real estate they can find and try to ensure the positions they can get off the restart. But as they come off a of lap one, oh, there's going to be a caution in the back. I think it was Bob, it was Kevin Feimster who ended up going around there in the number 33 truck right there. Didn't look like he hit anything. It's worse, I think, from what I saw. He tapped into the back wall just a little bit. See if we can get a replay on that, but that truck at least looks pretty okay at the moment. And that will be our first caution of the night, but lap one will be led by John Hagen. Let's take a look at the replay here. We'll see, it looks like he'll probably lose on his own here. And yeah, you can already see that truck beginning to spin. Almost gets some help there from the 60, but everyone else gets around, but at that point, just had to try to back it down. So good avoidance from the rest of the field and good holding down of the brake by Kevin Feimster, making a single car incident here. 
So we'll now start lap number three. We'll see if any car elects to pit. It looks like so early on in the race. I doubt anyone will elect to take a pit stop here. Most as track position is key. Most of the cars will elect to stay out here. Including Kevin Feemster, who did elect to come down, I think, real fast just to uh, make sure everything's okay on that truck. He'll be currently back in 32nd position. Scroll for the field here, show a few different drivers off. Joel Rodriguez there in the number nine truck, currently in third position. Saw him try to get something going on that restart there, but just couldn't really get close and make a lunge on uh, Wygent. Be happy to be in third position at the moment, but the field getting bunched back up. He'll have a second chance to kind of redo it here and see what they can do to try to get maybe up to that front row here. So as field will get bunched up here, we'll get the one to go. This time by as lights will now be out on the pace. Car, not a truck like we usually see past couple weeks. It's going to be Hagen, Wygent, Rodriguez, Adams, Parkers, Pendel, Santiago, Height, Clavett, Breo. Pretty much the same top 10 we saw from qualifying. Pretty much in the same order here. Maybe a few positions jumbled. But top 10 pretty much the same as we'll get ready for the second, uh, first, uh, second restart of the night, I should say. So as pace car will come up here, we'll take the hard left into the pit lane here. Beyond Hagen's control. Is out and away we here we go again. I see pretty how race they're getting up for a second. Basically, Noah's Ark, two by two by two by two, all the way from second all the way back there. Joel Rodriguez is going to try to make a move on that double zero truck. Got them for an inside line here, could slide up, and now uh, the double zero could be under pressure from the 42 of Parkhurst. The 42 cannot get on the corner panel, so the double zero will fall down the third. And the 42 will have to stay for four position. We'll cut down the field here a little bit. We'll focus on the 83, Jonathan Adams. He's in a bit of a sandwich here at the moment. Had a fast truck at Homestead last week, but kind of a little bit of trouble. Right there. Oh, big move there inside. That was a 34 of Bobby Blowers. Car is beginning to lose it. Angel Santiago also sideways. The rest of the car is going to file through. We are going to stay green after that. Very chaotic there. A lot of cars had to get on the brake. And a handful of good cars there got at least a little bit of damage there. I think a few are at least calling maybe a caution should have came out, but he will stay green at the moment. You can see cars beginning to fan out here. David Pugh under attack here. We were focusing on the battle for P18. That's 17th, 18th, and 19th with Bobby Blowers, Brian Jones, and David Pugh all fighting for position and the 70, yeah, in the Tyler Woodward as well there. So back up to the front here, John Hagen has opened up a bit of a gap here, just a little under a second from Joel Rodriguez. And you see basically from first all the way to six, they've all gotten a comfortable gap between the uh, each other. And then as we go down, you'll just see in the background, pretty much single file from the three truck on back of Cali Height, with a lot of traffic behind here just waiting to make a prounce if the opportunity opens up. Speaking of, there's that opportunity. Good run there from the 21 truck. Alfred Denny at home, trying to get into the mm -hmm. top 10. Can't really get the great exit, though. Oh, bit of a wall smack, though, from the white truck on the outside, the 94. I think that should be enough for Alpha Denny to get through, and it could also open the door for Stefan Oberstadt to follow suit here as Pendel's in a bit of a uh, no-man's land here. As traffic on the inside out, the Lily Frazier did a psych move on that 88 truck. 
And they'll still be side by side. We'll cut up here to the 71 of Lily Frazier. She meant the 40, my mistake there. You can see just getting a little racy in the back there. There we go. <laughs> Gotta be a little bit more clear with my names here. As you can see, the 40 and the square D and Nathan Eastap just kind of right in that bottom here. As you can see on that outside, Christopher Pendel still trying to find a way down. Looks like he'll finally get that breather in there. That's what I saw there a minute ago. The 40 going deep into the corner, similar to the, the lap before on the 88 truck. Couldn't make it stick last time. This time by, they'll feel a lot more brave and engaged, and it looks like he'll clear himself and get the clear done. So the 88 ends up touching the wall there just a tiny bit. A puff of smoke, but he'll keep it pointed in the right direction. We'll see if he's now going to be under attack here from the 34 of Bobby Blowers and the 25 of Blake Henderson ready to try to crash that 88's party. 12 laps already in the books here. John Hagen has led every single lap up front. As you can see, this is getting pretty racy back here. Is right now uh, the 88 of Stefan Oberstadt trying to stop the bleeding here and find a, a lane here just to kind of get back in rhythm. Riding on board here with the eight of Patrick Oberstadt. This is currently 19th position, battling David Pugh and John Smeal. You can see right now no laps led for him. Right now, kind of just high as he's been is where he currently is. Just kind of just been holding out here right now, currently 19th. Just a lot of traffic, though, just makes trying to find a lane. He's kind of in that middle groove here, which is not the ideal line around here. You can make it work because there's Jonathan Smeal on his inside. Kind of taking away that rhyme that the eight car would want. So we'll cut back up to the race lead here. John Hagen, he's opened up a three, about a three second gap right now on the nine truck. Speaking of the nine truck, there they are under pressure from Mark Parkhurst in that 42 truck. Don't you see your eyes? A little bit of a uh, eye racing number glitch here, you could say, as he drives the 42 on most nights. Here in back, 19 out of timing and scoring. There's a double zero of Pacey Wygent. He's fallen back a little bit here, qualified on the front row, has fallen down the fourth position, and has lost a bit of touch here, now kind of falling back to the top five here with Jonathan Abs and Alyssa Pelletier Sharp right in tow behind there in that white and black truck, respectively. The white for Jonathan Adams and the black for Alyssa Pelletier Sharp. There in the number 31 truck. Moving a little bit further back, there's the 56 of Dean Clavett. Jimmy Braille behind him in that number 51 truck. And Callie Height, currently one of the last few drivers in in the top 10, currently sitting P9. So that is a battle for 7th, 8th, and 9th, respectively. We're currently watching on our screen. This is Jimmy Braille trying to maybe get a good run there into the corner, but can just not really get a fender in there. Just got to be patient and just try to make the move when the door opens. Speaking of last car in the top 10 at the moment, just kind of finished that order, was Lily Frazier, but just got passed by Alfred Denny, who in the number 21 track, the hometown boy there is the number 21, currently got it back in the top 10, and there's a bit of a, what we were watching a little bit earlier, Lily Frazier under attack as Nathan Eastep is uh, climbing up here, currently up nine spots, now make it 10, as he's doing a signature kind of in-move, out-move here to one of the more aggressive drivers on overtaking at the moment. Biggest mover with 10 positions gained. You see now officially clear Lay Frazier. Next highest on the field is Austin Mongold and Alyssa Pelletier, Pel ah, Alyssa Pelletier Sharp up six spots respectively from where they started. So it's not going to be long for that 40 at the pace. They are going. They will get up inside that top 10. But they're probably going to need a little bit of help if they want to try to compete for this win. So here's the 48 truck, Byron Jones, the 88 of Patrick Oberstadt. 
So we're watching this battle here. Sorry, Stefan Oberstadt, I should mistake. Byron Jones and Stefan Oberstadt. David Pugh also joining the fray right now. This is a battle for 15th, 16th, and 17th, especially 16th, 17th, and 18th, respectively, as the car of the 15th, Christopher Bendel, is just a little bit up the road there. There's a battle between Blake Henderson and Bobby Blowers. Actually, it's Lily Fraser. As Lily Fraser just losing another spot here to Blake Henderson. And now the 94, Christopher Pendell, going to try to put that 71 down the 15th position. Speaking of Lily Frazier right now, as high as P10 at the moment, started 13th, but looks like as the run's gone on, the tires have fallen off at least a little bit, and is now trying to keep the top 15 spot at the moment. Has at least a little bit of a cushion before the threat should raise. So here's the number 38 truck of Austin Mongold. Like I said, one of the bigger movers here, up six spots here, trying to make it, well, he's already still up six here, trying to keep six spots gained. As David Pugh putting on a bit of a challenge here, John Smeal and Scott Panensky right there behind the background there. And that red and white truck and Panensky in that white truck right there. Not the uh, fully unsponsored one, that is Michael Saccone. We're still having a bit of a texture glitch as we saw that last week as well. So, a bit of an issue there in that light scheme for the 41. Picking up a little bit up the road here. I think Jim Rebreo just made a move on Dean Clavett. They actually are side by side at the moment here. Rebreo trying to take the long way around here. A bit unorthodox. He will get the pass done, so put Breo up to eighth. And just in the distance there, Bobby Blowers made a move on Alfred Denny. They are still side by side. This is Pax beginning to bunch up, because right there is the 33 uh, truck of Cali Height. Just up the road, a bit of a uh, red meat, if you will, for these drivers. When you can see a truck in front of you, it kind of motivates you to get that extra little speed out of it to try to catch. There also you can see in the background as well, side by side action. That is Alfred Denny and Blake Henderson. No, it's actually Nathan Estep and Alfred Denny. But here's Kelly Height. Yep, there we go. Um, with the 40 truck moving, continue the move up here and now officially be firmly inside. Well, not in the top 10 yet because Bobby Blyers got around both cars respectively. But the battle for 11 rages on here as neither car willing to give an inch here. It's been kind of interesting to note here. Notice this as this run's gone on here. Every time Nathan makes a move on a truck, Blake Henderson's usually right there in tow to follow through to firmly make the pass. Alf Denny will hold off charges, at least for now. Blake Henderson has caught up along with Christopher Pendell here. as they have joined this fray here. You know, it is getting a little racy up here for P, uh, P4 right now, I should say. P3, P4. Is there's Alyssa Pelletier Sharp. She felt comfortable at this track. She said in the interview last week at home, said she felt her odds were great here to get that truck into a winning position here. She's already got it up to P4 here, made a move on uh, Wygent and is now trying to chase down Parkhurst and Rodriguez, and that's also a little bit of battle hanging up here as Parkhurst is on the back of Rodriguez. Don't adjust your monitors right now at the very least. John Hagen is checked out. Currently about seven and a half seconds clear of this battle for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all in this little train here we're watching. But John Hagen right now feeling confident around here in Milwaukee. LTH has a pretty good record here. Won a stage last night in the HDL Cup Series and the RX Truck Series. She finished on the podium, finished third here. So she knows she has success here at Milwaukee. It just kind of mm -hmm. calls out to her really well. She's really gone on the flat ovals in general. You look at New Hampshire, look at USA. For some reason, she's just got it hooked up at these types of tracks, but it wasn't hooked up there at a turn four. Yep. That can be a bit of a risk. It's always a track. You can always ask every driver on this 
field or any field you can say on a racing situation and you can say what track do you feel the confident and a lot of drivers will give you different answers but there's always that one track to say I, when you give if you give me a semi-decent truck or a semi-decent vehicle what have you i can go out there and take good win here and right now we do have a caution on the surface looks like it may have been well tyler woodward had a disconnection i don't know if he was the exact reason for the caution as he's had a few it's incidents like a, on his been. own patrick overstead also went off track as well We'll see here. Here's Tyler Woodward. Uh, this is, I believe, this is the five of Gonzalez, which is not who we were looking for. We we're looking for the eight oh. of Oberstadt. Yep, there's Patrick Oberstadt. So, let's see if we can take a look here and figure out what happened. I thought it might have been between Poznanski and Pew. Oh, no. That, yeah, it would that be what Oberstadt happened. and Poznanski. That's why mm -hmm. it was the way it was. Yeah, so Tyler Woodward's incident was separate to this as he pulled it off the racing surface. But regardless, that will be the incident for the caution there between Ponensky and Oberstadt. As we see everyone coming on in here, almost everyone will elect to pit here. It's been a long run, fresh tires, fuel, what have you. We'll see if anyone maybe elects to try something different here at the very least. There's a few trucks. I think they missed box there. Bobby Blowers missed his box. A few drivers also missed the box well. Lily Frazier and Stefan Oberstadt missed their boxes as well. So we'll have to come back around and take a, uh, a second chance here. So as the cars cycle out here, John Hagen will be the first one out of the drivers that did not miss the box with Mark Parker, Joel Rodriguez, Pellete Sharp, and Pacey Wygent will be your supposed top five bearing that Blowers, Flasier, and Oberstadt pit this time by. Very busy pit lane, 34 trucks. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to miss it. Did hear some things that someone did not even hear her spotter in that case. So it could be a situation maybe being too far to the right. We saw that last week too with the 94 Pendel missed their box as well at Homestead. So with being such a big field and such a long, large thing, it can be very hard to easily just get tunnel vision. Next thing you know, your box is there and you miss it because remember in practice you get assigned a box based on where you uh, came into the session once you qualify you get a different box most likely and unless you get pole position you came in first for instance and then you have to get adjusted to that so you could spend the whole practice session pulling in on one box and then get a box that's farther back or further up and have to get used to that as well Regardless, though, the other three cars that did miss the box did come in next time by handing the back lead, panning the lead back over to John Hagen. A few trucks will end up getting the wave around here as well. You can see them in front right now. That is Casey Ellis and Greg Pillar. We'll both get the wave around here. As they get the wave around right now, we'll do a quick little update on the racing field right now at the moment. We have 31 trucks still, 32 trucks took the uh, green flag, 31 trucks still running at the moment with 29 of them on the lead lap, only two of them on one down at the moment. Uh, Ode and Patrick Oberstadt both being one down at the moment. John Hagen has led every lap so far. Well, almost every lap, because I think one lap, one pit stop change possibly could have changed something. But regardless, Mark Parkers will line up on the outside here. So it will be Hagen, Parkhurst, Rodriguez, Sharp, Wyn, uh, Wygen, Adams, Height, Breo, Astep, and Denny. Your top 10 here coming to the restart. The pace car is off, green flag is out, and away we go again. Now you can see John Hague goes a little bit too deep in the corner here, but he'll smooth it out, keep it sailing. Joel Rodriguez looking to try to get second position here. Trouble behind. And we have a quick caution, that's a 71 of Lily Frazier, and the 41 of Ponensky also involved along with O'Day. Now you see three trucks involved in incidences. 
interesting to see what exactly happened here. 71 was stopped out of two, and then we saw Parkhurst and O'Day a little bit a little bit down. So I wonder if it may have been two separate incidences here that uh, caused the caution to come out here. So we'll take a look at the replay here. Here we're focusing on the 71 of Lily Frazier. You already see Lily's a little, a little bit loose here. Mm-hmm. Oh. She gets a, yeah, she gets on that in there a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Try to on the inside of the 18 truck, and it just doesn't stick. Nope. It goes and up and then right in front of that truck. And then you see cars taking a phase of action. Then, bam, you can see uh, the 41 of Ponensky get involved in that incident, along with uh, Ode, who ended up hitting the truck um, of Lily Frazier. So that kind of stinks for Ode as he was one down, looking to try to get his lap back there. Now obviously involved in the caution. He will not get his lap back. That should now hand over to Patrick Oberstadt, who will now get one of his laps back and will be back on the lead lap. A few cars liking to come in here. Most of them involved in the incident, but a few that were not. Angel Santiago and Richard Gonzalez liking to come in here as well. But with long pit stop times for Gonzalez, at least 19 seconds for him, does make one if he had a little bit of damage he elected to come in and fix up. Same thing with Santiago and Ponensky. So I guess they're fixing some damage up here, and it's not a off-sequence strategy. Another two pace laps here, opposite the lap down card. We'll have another extra pace lap to tap on top of that. Now, hopefully, they can kind of. We saw they, they got a good little green flag run going, so hopefully, they can get that going again here. And the caution spree, caution situation can uh, be at least eradicated at least a little bit here. We get another good green flag run here. But it's up to the drivers to decide. So, as the rest of the field gets kind of bunched up here, 23 getting caught back up. 41 and 78 still in pit lane. Coming back down again to fix up the damage. As the field gets bunched up here, we'll get the one to go this time by. Manski will beat the pace car, so all the cars on the pit lane will make it out. Well, actually, not all of the Ode is still on the pit lane, but he was already one down. He will now go two down, trying to get that truck to running speed. So 30 trucks still on the, uh, on the track at the moment here. Still led by John Hagen. Parker's sort of was under threat there from the nine of Rodriguez. See if they can clear that nine this time by going out of two without having the threat of the nine on the inside. So it's going to be Hagen, Parker's, Rodriguez, Sharp, Adams, Wygent, Height, Breo, Denny, Estep, your top 10 here. Base car will take the hard left. Green flag is out. And away we go. Well, Joel Rodriguez very deep into the corner there. Try to follow Hagen's breaking lines. Almost hits the back of the 81. And the 9 will finish up the second position, but gets a little off line there. Going to open the door for Sharp. Sharp, though, can't make the high line work. Going to open the door for the 83 of Adams. And we have another caution. Looks like it was the 8. It was the 8 truck. It looks like he's a little slow off the backstretch here. Wouldn't be shocked if it was him. Now we're going to get a good angle of this. Yeah. I'm not even certain if he was exactly the caution. Yep. 
Looks like he even had his on his regard. It was July, uh, it was the eight. Looks like he said his, something with his shifter having him issues. So I'm gonna guess it was a self spin try when the car shifted awkwardly. Fourth caution of the night here. Only one car elected to come in here. Byron Jones going to try to break trend here. He's electing to come in. Everyone else will stay out here. So a bit of an odd choice, but last pit stop was on lap 30. We're now on lap 40. I'm trying to maybe go off sequence here, go a little long, maybe try to catch a late caution, try to make something happen here. Speaking of Ode, you'll see him around the outside here. Two down. Now he'll be one down. He is our lucky dog at the moment. Still be one down, but at the very least, he'll get one of his laps back. So here on lap 42, just under halfway here, here in the Wisconsin 100, here for the HDL Hammer Down Truck Series on ABN1. If you are just tuning in, I am Kevin Young, joined the booth here by with Carmen Sienna. This is a great day for a race here, great night, and thank you for tuning in. We'll give you a quick little race summary here. Lap 41 of 100, 59 laps to go, four cautions so throughout, throughout the night, 11 caution laps, and two lead changes, which has almost felt like that's actually a bit of a shock to me, but Joel Hagen has had a John Hagen's had a dominating run here at the very least is looking to try to keep that going through almost the second half of this race as we're still a little bit of ways away from the halfway point but again thank you for tuning in here on a Tuesday night we're glad you chose us and we hope you can be entertained with the next half of this race so Sophia will get bunched up this time by here hey will obviously be on the inside here has been strong for him most of tonight, and he'll like to keep that. Joe Rodriguez will be on the outside. Going for the rest of the field, we got Jonathan Adams and Lisa Pelletier-Sharp, Mark Parkhurst and Callie Height, Pacey Wygent, Jeremy Breo, Nathan Estep, and De uh, Dean Clavett will be your top 10 coming to this next restart. So as Pesar is going to take the left into the pit lane here. Green flag is out. And away we go on lap 44. Joe is trying to hang it around that outside here. Hagen will clear, though. Three wide in the back there. You can see the double zero trying to make a move on Parkers. And he'll get it done. Now he's going to try to get around the three at Cali Height. A little bit further back there. Four wide almost. Five wide, I almost counted there, between the 41 and the 71 and a few of the trucks. Trying to fight hard here to get as up as quick as they can here as we're a little bit further back here. And... See the bad one. Back up to the front. Actually, we'll go back to the middle here. You can see this is right where the 40 truck is currently. This is the battle for seventh. We're watching right now on our screens. Parker's one of the biggest losers on this restart. He's fallen back a couple spots here. And he's trying to find a way to the bottom. But with the 51 of Breo there. 51 almost there. You can see another car spinning in the distance there. That is the Boston Mongol. I think he got sent down pit lane. He ended up going down pit lane because of that spin. So he will take a 
a uh, emergency pit stop, or at least I should say a quick trip down pit lane here. Won't stop in his box, so in and out he will go, but that's going to be a lot of time lost for that 38 truck. But the battle rages on here. The 51 of Jerry Breo now under pressure here. From the uh, 21, Alfred Denny. Standing going to try to get a run here. Blake Henderson right there in the distance as well, but 51's going to be able to clear Alfred Denny. So put Breo, well, Breo will keep his position in P number nine, at least for the uh, moment here. Up in second, they're getting a little racier. Pelty Sharp has a run on the second place car, Joel Rodriguez. Oh, well, actually, we'll have to hold that thought as we do have a caution. It's the 22 truck that's around. Right in the wall there, that 22 truck is Michael Saccone. Trying to see no other real, maybe the 24 D French, Don Francesco had a bit of an incident as well. Let's we'll take a look at the replay here. So keep on that all white truck there, side by side with, oh, Kevin Feimster. Ah, yep, got a little help there. So Feimster went in, got a little, uh, little squirrely there, end up giving the uh, 22 truck a bit of a hook. And the 22, obviously, you can see right there, truck leaning heavily on one side. We'll see if you can get that fixed up. Pit stops occurring here. John Hagen electing to come in. Very odd, as he'll come in a, pretty much a, would say a low, because a few of cars a little bit further back came in. Byron Jones, Greg Piller, David Pugh, Christopher Bendel, uh, Patrick Oberstadt, Nicholas DiFrancesco, uh, Don Francesco, uh, Austin Mongold, and Michael Saccone all in. But John Hagen, one of the only cars to elect a pit from, you could argue, at least the top 10. So very odd strategy for the 81 truck. And we know how aggressive the uh, it can be in the backs. So we'll see how Hagen, Hagen's got the pace. We'll see how quickly Hagen can get back towards the front here. Now he's going to have a lot of cars ahead of him. See how he can make that work. Ode will get another one of his laps back. We saw him go around the outside there. He will now officially be back on the lead lap, which will now give us 31 trucks on the lead lap. So we get another one in the green here. Again, 32, 32 cars took the flag, only retirement being Tyler Woodward. I'm oh, sorry, Tyler Wood, Woodard. Um, not Woodward, because there's no other letter there. But anyway, 40, uh, the 42 truck is behind the wall. 31 trucks still running. Joseph Field gets bunched up here. Obviously, it's going to be another lap here for the pace car. Lex to come in here. His lights are still on. A bit of a, a change of fortune up front, if you will. Not John Hagen leading after a while. It's going to be Joel Rodriguez and Pelletier Sharp up in the front here. John Hagen being one of the uh, few cars in the back right now, currently P20 on the freshest tires. Only back to 20, but it's Rodriguez, Sharp, Adams, Wygent, Estep, Height, Parker, Breo, Danny Henderson top 10 here right now coming to this restart. This pace car comes in, restart flag is out, and away we go again here on lap 52.
Penalty Sharp looking to try to get a run here around the high side. Joe Rodriguez still going to try to keep the fender in it. They're still going to be side by side, and the 31 will clear the nine. So put Penelope Sharp up to the point there. A little bit further back, you see the 83 truck currently in a battle for fourth position with Cali Height on the outside. And the 40 truck and the 74 truck raging out of battle as well. Though the nine, though, trying to answer back. Going to open the door for this double zero to have a move here going into one. Wyjin will actually get clear of Rodriguez, so put Wyjin up to second. You can just see how aggressive it is in the back there, too, as well. Trucks, multiple trucks side by side there. Just trying to find points, and we'll have another caution. It's the 81 of John Hagen, I think. It is John Hagen. And that's the risk of pitting alone. Now he was buried in traffic. And he'll have to... We don't know how much damage he's got here. Doesn't look awfully torn up. So we'll take a look at replay. I'm hearing it was just so close. There you can see him on that high side, right next to Ponensky in that white light truck there. Take a nice little camera. Oh, you can already see what's happening right now. He's up in the road in that 41. Okay, yeah, that plays a bit more of a clearer picture. You can see three wide right now, so we'll rewind here. With the 23, the 81, and the 41. And then Lily Frazier kind of comes in. And then just gives a little touch to the 81, and then 71 ends up giving the 81 a liver hook there. And the 81 luckily doesn't hit anything, but multiple spots lost for the 81 there. So back to live action, you see multiple trucks now liking to come in, but some staying out as well. Some of the big names coming in, Casey Wygent, Jonathan Adams, Jeremy Breo, Bobby Blowers, Kevin Feemster, Stefan Oberstadt, John Smeal, James Wright, Patrick Oberstadt, Michael Saccone, David Pugh, Austin Mongold, John Hagen, all electing to come back in here again. So John Hagen taking another stop here to get some fresh tires back on that thing. So from bad to worse, we could say for John Hagen, but now we got seeing a, a bit of a mixed strategy here at the very least as the 24 truck will get a lap back and will now be back on the lead lap as well. So all in all, just looking here to confirm something, all in all, yep, cars 17th on up, electing to stay out here, and cars about 11th on up, so Lily Frazier to our race leader, Lisa Pelletier Sharp, all stayed out to um yeah just all stayed out not pitted last since the first time all the cars came out on 35. So again, with multiple, again, tire differences and cars on different strategies, it will be interesting to see, as we just saw there on that last repo with Hagen's incidents, multiple cars trying to fight for track and with it being such a narrow, kind of non-proofy track, a lot of cars trying to find lanes that may or may not exist. So it's going to get very racy in the back at the very least with the tire differentials. Once you see how it all plays out in accordance. But the top leaders don't think they can make it to the end here. Got to try to stay out to get to that last window. I assume if we get one more caution, we may see the rest elect to come in. But at the moment, they're staying out, at least in the short term. So field's going to get bunched up here. Should see the lights on the pace car go out. It's going to be Sharp, Rodriguez, Height, Estep, Henderson, Parkers, Denny, Clavitt, Santiago, and Ponensky. Ponensky, who's involved in the first opening two cautions, has gotten that 41 truck up the P10. And Lily Frazier, the last of the drivers that uh, last pitted on 35 in 11th with Byron Jones to her outside.
Hanscar going to pull on in here. Green flag is out. And away we go. Great launch by the 31. As Cali Height going to try to make a move for second here. And she will successfully get that three truck up to second. So I know one person in the comments that are pretty happy. She'll try to hang on a second a little bit further back. You can see Blake Henderson making a move on Parkhurst. Parkhurst way up the racing line there. And that's going to be an advantage for Henderson. Henderson now up the top five. You can see in the back right now, though, getting racing just outside the top ten there. There's a lot of commotion, a lot of chaos here. Just trying to keep an eye on all of it. As you can just see, top 10 still holding. Byron Jones now able to get inside the top 10. And just in that long shot there, you can just see about 15th on back is two abreast with the cars on the inside and outside just trying to get the spots they can get. Speaking of there, back in that little uh, smorgasbord, there is the 81 of John Hagen. That is currently 14th position we're focused on right now. Still get around Bobby Blowers. Fresh tires beginning to pay off here, at least now. But he's got another big gaggle have to go through. Or he can at least get some cl clean running here. Three wide in front of them. That's the Breo, Santiago, and Frazier. Santiago way up the groove. Don't think Santiago's going to be too thrilled about that. It's going to be a couple spots lost. Another car spinning in the distance there. They see multiple cars going to try to take evasive action. Luckily, it's that red and white truck. John Smeal, I believe that's who it is. Yeah, it is John Smeal. He was sideways for three and four from what I saw. Luckily, no one hits him. We stay green. So back up to the lead here. Belly Sharp getting a bit of a groove here. Kelly Height right there in second position, trying to close that gap just under a second at the moment. And there you can see a battle, Blake Henderson. And we have a caution here. 38 truck is a round of Austin Mongold there on the front stretch here. So see what exactly happened here. It was a little bit in the back of the pack. I had a guess maybe he got loose off of four. Well, I, I guess my picture was wrong here. He's in a bit of a uh, sandwich here, but he actually loses it on his own. So it's kind of got lost out of four, spun, and got it refired. So the field gets bunched up here on lap 64 of 100 here. I'd assume this is high time. Most of the cars that did not come in yet are going to elect to come in here. As you should roughly... Well, they came in around 33, but there was... Well, there's a long run in that, too, so... It should roughly get you to about 97, 98 if you come in now. So we get another caution. You should have enough to get to home to the finish. And that seems to be the case right now as most of these cars coming in are taking their final pit stop of the night. As the top eight elect to come in at the moment... And the lead will now be handed over to Byron Jones. Let's look at the cars came in. Joel Rodriguez, Mark Parker, Santiago, Pendel, Clavitt, Sharp, Danny, Frazier, Estep, Henderson, Ponensky, Don Francesco, Ellis, Gonzalez, Pillar, Saccone, and Ode all electing to come in here and take presumably final stops at night. So 
So Byron Jones, as, as pit stops have occurred here, Byron Jones will take the lead. Jeremy Brea will be behind him in second. And John Hagen now back up the third. So this Byron Jones here playing a bit. Did an off strategy here. We saw him pit, came down a single time alone. Obviously gained currently 17 spots. will get a lap led for his troubles. Now for obviously staying out here and taking the lead. But looking to get a good run here up 17 from where he qualified. So he started 18th. As he's been low, he's back was 25th, if I'm reading that correctly. 29. 29th, thank you. Byron Jones happy to be up here right now at the moment. But going to have a bit of a challenge behind him. He's going to have the Daytona, 5, uh, Daytona 500 1-2 behind him with Jerry Breo to his outside and John Hagen now going to be to his uh, behind him, I should say. I guess Breo to his outside and Hagen behind. Let the field get bunched up, and we'll do a quick rundown of our top 10 here as we'll get the one to go this time by. Yep, that will be the confirmation. Lights are now officially out. So it's going to be Byron Jones and Jerry Brow first row with John Hagen and Bobby Blowers in row two, Jonathan Adams and Kevin Feemster in row three. Stefan Oberstadt and James Wright haven't said much about him tonight. He's currently got that truck really in row four. And John Smeal and Pacey Wygen make up row five. And that will be the first five rows here. First car that came out of the pit lane, Joel Rodriguez, who pit in the last up will now be P14 with Kelly Height right, right behind in the next row along with uh, Nathan Eastep. Slow stop for Peltier Sharp. She's down 18. So quick little update on the runners that came on the last pit stop. But it's going to be on, well, it's going to be on green flag, but it's going to be on Byron Jones to go when the late to goes. So pace car going to come on in. Green flag is out. And away we go. And quick caution there. 19 truck. Parkhurst. And I think it may have been a situation where trucks did not go. We may have saw a stack up there. We got us a quick caution. We'll take a look here. I'm going to assume again. Ours did not go or someone tried to predict the restart here. Keep an eye on that 40, uh, 40 truck. Uh, Parkhurst here. 42. Ooh, big lick there. You can see that inside line just did not get going. You can see that one truck kind of struggled to get going, and it just caused an accordion effect that affected a few of the trucks here. So I think we're going to get a second look here, possibly. There's Blake Henderson right now. We're on board. You can see basically pushing Parkhurst. You can see he's giving gap, giving space. Oh, maybe he predicted just a bit early, but he saw the car ahead go. Very odd, but that was the hook that just gave Parkhurst a bump into the inside wall. So back to live action. Here's Byron Jones again, able to keep the lead after the uh, quick caution there. We'll add another couple laps to his lap total here. Angel Santiago will get the lucky dog here. And so see that white truck, pink and white truck go around the high side here. And they will get their lap back. So right now at the moment, we have 29 trucks currently on the lead lap. It 
Right. 29 lap trucks currently on the lead lap. Christopher Bendel won the few cars, one down with, and we have 30 trucks, I'll try this again. 30 trucks currently running still, 29 trucks on lead lap. Christopher Bendel, only truck, one down at the moment. Two retirements in this race, Tyler Woodard, who ended up retiring around lap 20, and Mark Parker, the damage was terminal, and that is going to be race done for the uh, driver of the 42 truck, and he'll have to rebound next week. So it feels like this race has just flew by here. Again, 100 laps, scheduled distance. Lap 71 will be going back to green on lap 73. This field should get bunched up here. So again, not much really change because of a quick caution there, but it's still going to be Jones, Breo, Hagen, Blowers, Adams, Adams, Feimster, Wright, Oberstadt, Smeal, Wygent, your top 10, with Pugh, Oberstadt, Rodriguez, Mongold, and Estep, your top So the pace are going to take the hard left into the pit lane here. Green flag is out. And away we go. Good launch by the 51 there. Brea, but the 48 going to answer back on the low side. Still side by side for the moment. Oh, car around. That's the 18. Of James Wright, looks like he got a little bit of help there. I think that's the double zero. Yep, a Pacey Wyjet. Two more cars spinning there as well. In succession, that's the 70 of you and the nine. Uh, Oday and the nine, but we'll take a look at the incident here. Oh, I think he just got loose on his own, and the double zero just happened to be there. And was just syndicated, so just a wrong place, wrong time for White and as the 18 truck just was spinning and nowhere to go. So the drivers are getting a little feisty here. Want to get some green flag running in here. Tempers are beginning to boil over just a tiny bit, but we should see some good racing here. Open up here as we're going to hit lap 75, 25 laps to go here when they take the uh, line here. So it's Pendel, speaking of driving that question, now going to get one their lap back. We'll now be back on the lead lap. Will now give us officially 30 cars still running, 30 cars on the lead lap. So not many cars, not many cars, a handful of cars have gone a lap down here tonight, but most of them have been able to get stay on the lead lap, get back on the lead lap with the extra cautions we've had. Right now, the 78 and 9 still on pit lane. Only a few cars like to come in along with the double zero in the 18. See if they can beat the pace car. And both successfully will. So now officially with 25 to go here. Could turn the pressure cooker up to 11 here. As drivers are going to be getting ready to push and push hard here to try to get the spots they can get when we see the check flag in this thing.
So as few will get the one to go this time by and will get bunched up. Going to be Breo and Jones taking up the front row here. With Flowers, Hagen, Adams, and I believe it's going to be uh, Feemster. Yes, it is. Oberstadt, Smeal, Stefan Oberstadt, I should say, then Patrick Oberstadt. Patrick Oberstadt and David, actually, David Pugh will make up. Austin Mongol will make up the top 10. Actually, David Pugh, sorry, it flipped there for a second. It's going to be Patrick Oberstadt, David Pugh making up the top 10 with Austin Mongol, Pelletier Sharp, A-Step, Clavett, Height making uh, top 15. But anyway, pace car is going to come in this time by. And as the pace car takes the hard left into the pit lane. Green flag is out. And away we go. With 23 laps to go here in the Wisconsin 100. Brea will be able to clear this time by the 48 with a little less uh, trouble here. You see John Hagen making a big move up, possibly on Bobby Blowers. Going in deep, sees the open door. Going to send, you see another truck, John Smeal, very high on the racing surface here. In his own little three wide battle with a 38 in the eight. And cars spinning behind, that's a three at Cali Height with multiple cars involved. Looking at the list, I think we got Kelly Height, Nicholas Stott, Francesco, Blake Henderson involved. There's 24 right there. Henderson's presumably behind. Yep, you see the LA Knight scheme right there. And Kelly Height also involved. So take a look at the replay here. See exactly what happened. So there are the 40, ooh, the 40 and the three get a little contact there. Three gets sent into the 71 of Lily Frazier who goes way up the racing surface. And at that point, multiple cars just trying to find their way through here. Angel Santiago on the brakes. There's truck going high, will get clear, but engine hit clipping Lily Frazier. And then you can see cars on that side once uh, Don Francesco gets into the wall there. Not much where uh, Blake Henderson go. Luckily, I don't think Henderson ends up hitting the 24. But at least five, six trucks involved there, the very least. So back to live action. Byron Jones takes back the lead here. It's going to be Jones, Breo, Hagen. So Hagen was able to get a spot. And that's going to be interesting to know as long as he no one pits here, ahead or behind, Hagen's not going to have the inside in comparison to the outside. So we'll see if he can maybe make something work with that in that 81 truck. Anyway, with 20 laps to go here, been a very interesting second half, as you could say. First half was a lot of green flag running. Second half, a little bit more cautions, as you can expect when the uh, uh, intensity gets turned up to 11 here. Different strategies play out here with collecting cars, different to come in. And with every driver have made their final pit stop, and if they were not comfortably in, well, Byron Jones last pit on 48, but with all these caution laps, should have at least saved a little bit here. After that, Breo, Hagen, and everyone else inside the top 10, well, top 9, the Little Sharp, first car in top 10 here, uh, all pitting on 54. And then Pelton Sharp leads the rest of the field that came out 64 later. So the 64 lap runners are good to go to the end. The 54 lap runners should have enough fuel saved up to be good to the end. The question is with Iron Jones here, he should be good to go. 
if my math calculations are correct, as obviously he's had countless opportunities to come in if necessary, he's got the number he needs, but if we end up getting green white checkers added on top of this, what's a, will his economy be in question? But anyways, the field gets bunched up here. It's going to be Jones, Breo, Hagen, Flowers, Stefan Oberstadt, Jonathan Adams, Kevin Feemster, Austin Mongold, John Smeal, Patrick Oberstadt, your first five rows here. Okay, so we're going to take the hard left into the pit lane. Green flag is out, and away we go with 18 laps to go here. Side by side, they are still for one. John Hagen looking to try to make a move here. You can all see Jonathan Adams trying to follow suit. Look at the 81 trying to put a fender a little bit further back here. You can see the 8, the 38, and the 33. Feemster, Oberstadt, all fighting here. Oh, car around. That's Bobby Blowers. He was up there in the top five. I wonder exactly what happened here with that truck looking a lot worse where there goes the hood. I think he's had something happen here. We were quite racy up front here. You can see Hagen. Oh. He tried shooting the gap in front of Hagen. Mm -hmm. But not in front of Hagen. That was for the 83. That was in front of uh, Adams. Adams, yeah. And that, that just wasn't on. Mm hmm. By the way, Blowers, you can see a lot worse wear. He's going to have to come down to get that thing fixed. Have to find a new hood to put on that thing. But back up front, again, Byron Jones hangs on to the lead. But John Hagen now going to be on his outside instead of Jeremy Breo when we get going back here again. 16 to go here. And Jones with a little bit of a fake out here. We'll see if anyone else to come in here. I doubt if you're not in the top half pitting, or maybe if you're far enough back, you may, if you have tire sets saved up, you may take it. Just to give yourself that extra lunge if three-way checkers start flying. But looking through the field here, only car electing to come in is Bobby Flowers and Richard O'Day both coming on in here. Obviously, one having damage and the other maybe trying to go off sequence or fix extra damage from previous incidents of this race. with 15 laps to go here. Still a lot of racing left here to go. to green here. We should get the one green next time by. We'll be going back green with 12 to go. Again, thank you for those who have tuned in here tonight, and we should provide you a great finish here on ABN 1 for the Wisconsin 100. Again, it's Kevin Young joining the booth with Carmen Siena, and this should be a great finish we're gearing up for here. Yeah, Byron Jones has played the strategy correctly here. He's gotten to the front row, but John Hagen, our pole sitter, fastest lap recipient of the night, led the practice session, looking to go for the weekend sweep, metaphorically speaking, and bring home a win. He's gotten that truck back up second with Brea, or Daytona winner, in third. Jonathan Adams, strong truck last week at home, said looking to try to get a good rebound race here in Milwaukee. 
Stefan Overstadt trying to bring home a good top five. That's your top five, so the field gets bunched up here. Run through the rest of it. It's going to be Jones, Hagen, Breo, Adams, Overstadt, Feimster, Mongold, Patrick Overstadt, John Spiel, and Dean Clavett. It's your top ten with Lisa Pelte Sharp, Ponensky, Estep, Santiago, and Saccone, who's had a lot of incidents, well, a few run-ins here tonight, along with Panensky, both rocking just outside the top 10 at 12th and 15th, respectively. So is Pescar going to come off here? Green flag is out. And away we go. Jones holds off the charge here. Battle there for third. Brayo trying to hang on from Jonathan Adams. See, Bayman's almost two, three wide in the back there for the final positions. But John, uh, John Hagen going for a move here. Going to try to go around the long side here. Can't get the run open. That's going to open the door for Brayo. Brayo cannot get the run off he needs. He'll have to slot back to the third. But he's there to capitalize. Jonathan Adams with a big send there. Gonna go in deep, but can't get the Fender in. We come in the 10 to go. Byron Jones leads him to the line. John Hagen, Breo Adams, and Stefan Oberstadt currently are top five. No, John Hagen's got a fast truck. The question is, it's a bit of a hard place you can pass. And if something were to happen, Braille there battling for what could be the catbird seat with Jonathan Adams. And Up we have down. a caution. That's a 24. And another truck spinning in the back. I think it's Saccone. Looked all white. Is he a Saccone or? It's Saccone and right. Yeah. Listen. Listen, the radio comes, you can feel the frustration with John Hagen. Just wants, he knows, he probably has a bit about a long run truck here. He's trying to get a run. Now to hold off again here. Yep, Saccone right, we're in a second incident. First right was with Francesco. Field gets bunched back up here. We will, again, if you are tuning in here, obviously we're a little bit of ways away from it, but it should be at least worth bringing up that there is only a, a max attempt of three green white checkers if so needed. With the laps being so short, I don't think we're going to need all three, or maybe we won't even need one to begin with. But just to keep in the back pocket, just in case we do get a caution before the white flag, there are three attempts at a green white checker. It's going to be interesting to see as we're going to obviously get is another lap here pacing as cars are coming in. Both well, come in previously. The 34, the 94, and the 24 all in previously, all leaving the pit lane now to fix damage. With seven to go, we will get the action with five to go. And with the we've seen so far this past 30 ish laps. The aggression turned up to a high number. You could probably call it 9 or 10. 
it almost feels like we're gonna you're gonna have to turn up to 11 or 12 here because with such few laps remaining how how like obviously you want to be aggress aggressive but the problem is with so at least a minimum of three green checkers and at the very least we get a caution here we probably end up triggering one of those green flag uh, green white checkers in succession so there's not many laps left regardless it's gonna be interesting how this all plays out here So the field gets bunched up here. Picks their lines. So it's going to be Jones and Hagen, our front row, with Breo, Adams. Then it's going to be the Obastat brothers in row three. Feimster and Sharp, Cavett, Clavett, and Smeal will be your top ten here. Pace car is going to come off here. It comes out of four. Take the hard left. Can Byron Jones hang on, or will someone take advantage and take the lead? Pace car coming off. Green flag is out. And here we go with five laps to go. See the 48 driving in very aggressively there. Three wide, a little bit further back with John Smeal in the middle. Hagen trying to hang it around the high side here, trying to get a run. And we have another caution here. And it's the 46. John Smeal, I saw he was three wide there. And I'm wondering if that had something to do with something. I think it was the 46 and the 831 here. So there's Sharp. Ooh, yeah. Kind of nowhere to go for either truck. 46 nowhere to go. Piles into Santiago. And yeah, it's going to give at least two trucks some damage there. Cross the line here with three to go here. I think, depending if they get a quick start here, I think this is going to trigger a green white check if I'm not mistaken. Right, Carmen? Yeah, it should. Okay. We're on lap 98 right now, and I don't think we're getting a one to go signal because we, we, would, we would have needed the one to go signal now. Yeah. So. So this sh we'll see here as they come by this time by obviously truck getting their lap back. That is Richard O'Day, who will be is multiple down at this time. So it's currently now going to be three down. So if we do get three red checkers before the end of this thing, in theory, he should be back in the lead lap just in time for the. Uh... Actually, he would still be because three, two, one. He'd actually be one down for the final green white checker. But still trying to hope just other cars have uh, incidents in regard. So with two to go here, the lights do not go out. They do not. So this will be a green white checker. So our first green white checker will be triggered here right now. 38 will not beat the pace truck, it looks like. Actually, we'll give it to him. So 38 will keep. Uh, Austin Manga will stay on the lead lap there just barely. That should be the first three green white checkers. And with being laps being so short around here, there's not much time for a truck to make a move. For those in the chat, this is the first overtemp attempt. We have three attempts um, guaranteed here by the letter of the law. 
So first green white checkered attempt attempted on this time by if there was another caution. So again, it's a green lap, a white lap, and a checkered lap. So if they see coming around, if they take the white flag, the next flag will end the race, whether it be a caution or a checkered flag. However, if they get a caution wall on the green attempt and the leaders not take the flag, we will end taking another attempt here. And we'll have two remaining after this. So this will be the first, two to go after this. So as the field gets bunched up, it's going to be Jones, Hagen, Breo Adams, Stefan Oberstadt, Kevin Feimster, Patrick Oberstadt, Dean Clavett, Nathan Eastep, Pacey Wygent will be your top 10 with Ponensky, Rodriguez, Sharp, Height, and Frazier rounding up the top 15. It's going to be interesting because John Hagen, he's got a fast truck, but is two laps going to be enough for him to make a move? Is it going to be enough for anyone to make a move on this 48? Because the 48's had good enough restarts and he's been able to hold it going into the corners. But we'll find out here. So Pascar going to come on in. Green flag is out. And away we go. And that may have been the restart. Hagen needed. He will clear it. The 48 going to be slow. And he's going to be three wide going into one. Jones did not get going. Hagen gets clear. Breo going to get second. We'll have to hold off that. Going to answer back here. We're going to see. Still side by five for second. As Hagen going to come around three and four here. The rest of the cars keep it clean. The leader should see the white. He will see the white. So next flag will end this race. Jones able to hang on for a second. Battle for the third podium spot on the line here with Adams and Breo. Adams going to get clear. Can Breo answer back? There a little bit back there. You see Stefan Overstep making a defensive move. Car around. I think it's Lily Pelletier Sharp. She's in the wall. We will stay green as John Hagen got him off the last corner. It was a very unconventional route, but he will win the Wisconsin 100 with Jonathan Adams, Byron Jones, making up your podium here. And to put a cherry on the top, John Hagen sets the fastest lap of the race there on the last lap of the race. And he will take the win here tonight and the weekend sweep with that for troubles. Practice session, qualifying, race win, and fastest lap for his troubles. Finishing up the order, Jamie Breo, Nathan Estep will take the top five. Pacey Wingen, Stefan Oberstadt, Scott Panensky, Kevin Famser, and Patrick Oberstadt will round out the top ten here. So John Hagen trying to maybe find a way out here to maybe do something here. He'll get out eventually here. Boxed in, a few drivers giving him his congratulation taps. John Hagen, who got denied at Daytona, one spot away, wound up taking the win here tonight. Not bad for two out of three races attempted so far, second and the first. be John Hagen's first win in ABN broadcast from over a month and a half ago in the Mbox Cup Series at Darlington is when he got that win. John Hagen hits the, sits there on the front stretch there. Clearly proud of himself I, I guess I would say do not go anywhere if you're still here with the live broadcast the top three interviews will be coming up shortly here we should hopefully hear from Hagen uh, John Hagen uh, John, uh, Jonathan Adams and Byron Jones a lot of J's in that name in different positions but we'll hopefully hear from the top three here relatively shortly so do not go anywhere we'll hear from the top three coming up in a few minutes or maybe even a minute or two
Yes, sir. I just... Byron, this is Carmen from the ABM booth. Got a copy. Yes, sir. I do. What's going on? All righty. What a phenomenal drive there. Third place after leading us a bunch of laps there at the end. Well, I guess on your end, what could you have done differently to try to hold off Hagen and everybody there? Uh, my issue was is I got really, really antsy coming at the end. I was trying to get up through my gears too fast, and I kept just unshifting when I needed the shift uh, one way. Final restart, I went from first to third down the second, and then final corner, I went from fourth to third, but my shifter didn't shift. And um, But I'm not complaining. After the two weeks I've had where it's been DNFs, I'll take it this time. We finished third. It's going to be a good points day for us. Obviously, a, a wild race. You were to keep yourself out of it there. Uh, well, going into going into this race tonight, what were you expecting? And obviously, looking forward, you got Charlotte next week. How are you expecting to, to continue this momentum that you've built, been, better, been building up so far? Um, I actually just bought this track before the session went live. So um, tonight's was the first set of laps I've thrown down at this track. And I've come to terms that it's almost like a Martinsville. It's just bigger mile wide is the best way I think of it. So I'm really good at Martinsville. So it paid off here tonight and Charlotte next week. I've been known really good to be at Charlotte in the past. So filling in for the cup series next week, as well as I'm going to get my hands dirty at Charlotte again. So back to back Charlotte's. I can't complain. I feel really, really good heading in the next week. We did a phenomenal job tonight. Third place podium finish here at Milwaukee for your first time in Milwaukee. Not a bad way to end things off. <laughs> Before we let you go, they're the same one. They want to shout out and say thank you to the floor is yours. Congrats again on the podium finish tonight. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to Sophia, Sophia the Fierce. She lost her battle with childhood cancer um, a few months ago. So we have her on the car. We're going to continue to support her even after as well as Jones Paint and Design, my paint company. I go out there, I do graphics, designs, the paint schemes you see on me and Pacey every week. That's our, that's my company. So, and then as well as friends, families, shout out there. And then of course, y'all being up in the booth, we wouldn't have races without y'all. We appreciate it, Ian Byron Jones, third place finisher at Milwaukee. We get to see him two times next week at Charlotte for the HL Cup Series and the HL Truck Series. Byron, enjoy the podium, and we'll hopefully be seeing you again very soon next week. Will do. Thank you so much. That was Byron Jones, third place finisher tonight. We'll move our way up the order here to Jonathan Adams, another podium finisher tonight. Had a phenomenal result as well for Carolina Beagle Racing. Jonathan Adams, this is Carmen from the APN booth. You got a copy? Yep. All righty, what a drive for you here tonight. Another phenomenal performance. Walk us through it on your end. It seemed like there was a lot going on there for uh, for a lot of the race. You had to see experience a decent amount of it. Second place, though, can't be too awful bad about how tonight went for you. Yeah, it went a lot better than what I was thinking uh, it was going to go, especially with my luck in uh, HTL as a whole, not being able to finish a single race. I mean, it felt good to finally finish the race, and uh, getting second just was the... Uh, just top it all off. I mean, uh, the truck felt fast. Um, got caught and uh, caught up in a lot. And uh, just kind of basically drove my way through the front. Just tried to avoid all the wrecks. And got second out of it. Obviously, a phenomenal performance here tonight, obviously, for you. You think about you know trying to avoid all the accidents. It, it's survival of the fittest at this point, and you did a good job there. Looking forward, you do have Charlotte next week in this series. How are you feeling going into another intermediate track where it seems like these trucks seem to be a, a little bit uh, more capable of being spread out? Well, um, I, kind of, I personally like Charlotte as a whole. I've, I haven't run it in the trucks yet. Um, I hope it's uh, almost the same as it would be in the cup cars. So I'm um, hopefully going to put a little bit of practice for Charlotte this week and hopefully get another good result, maybe a win next week. Well, you've definitely got the ability to do that. We saw that here tonight, a phenomenal result. Second place after qualifying well, too, qualified in fourth. So consistently up near the front all night long for Carolina Beagle Racing and representing ARC's community as well. Before we let you go, though, obviously you had a, a wild night uh, last night, a, a good way to recover here tonight. Hopefully we get to see you again and hopefully we get to see a little bit more of what you can do next week as well. Though, before we let you go, if there's anyone to shout out and say thank you to, the floor is yours. Congratulations on the podium and hopefully the first of many to come this season. 
Yeah, I hope so. And uh, just want to shout out uh, Mr. Steven Oberstadt, my team owner, for giving me this opportunity. And I also want to shout out John Smeal for the scheme, as always. And yeah. Well, congratulations, John Adams, on a phenomenal podium here tonight. Second place after starting fourth. Doing a fantastic job. Made sure that you stayed in that position just about all race long. Never was any lower than sixth. So phenomenal effort all the way around. Hopefully get to see you again. Do this again next week. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Phenomenal job by Byron Jones there. To, uh, not by Byron. Well, by Byron Jones, he talked to you first. Jonathan Adams as well. Second place finish tonight. Again, no lower than sixth. And finishing second. Not a bad effort for the Carolina Beagle driver. But now we got to talk to the race winner. Phenomenal effort once again by John Hagen, who had a chance to win last night and he got stripped away. Made sure he didn't have to deal with that tonight. John, this is Carmen from the ABN booth. Do you got a copy? I got a copy. What a drive. Had to go through the field once again, but me made it work. 49 laps led out of, uh, I think, 103, 102 laps ended up being what was run. So you almost got half the race led. Walk us through it on your end. It was a wild time. Um, I I don't know how many times I have to say I love this car. I love this car. I, or truck. Sorry, people yelled at me early for that. Uh, I also ran this a bunch when C-Fix rolled through here. But I was really comfortable the whole night tonight. Uh, I knew where I needed to be on the brakes, everything. Like, I have that down to a science here at Milwaukee, at least in this car, not last night. I sucked last night. I guess this is retribution for last night. But I built, what was it, like a nine-second, eight-second lead after that first long green flag stint. I was like, all right, cool, I'm feeling good. And then I, was, I started realizing that this is going to turn into who is able to pit first and make it to the end to get that track position back. So I did. I pit with like 52 to go, 53, something like that, because I knew, I knew I was going to get those seven laps of caution easily. But... But then I calculate that spin, obviously. I was given zero room. <laughs> but, I mean, we didn't get any damage from it. We, we were gathered. I went down and topped off just to be safe to check damage and whatnot when I got spun. And uh, it was just a march to the front. I was getting pissed off at the end because we couldn't go green for more than half a lap. And I couldn't make a move. And finally, I guess I got semi-gifted with Byron missing that shift. But I, I still feel like I would have worked around him because I got a better restart. But overall, it was awesome. He did a phenomenal job tonight. Again, this is a race we weren't even expecting to be here for. What does it look like going into Charlotte, a race that's going to mean a lot to you? Obviously, uh, being a part of the arms, armed forces here, Charlotte being a, a military uh, support week for HTL. How are you feeling going into that, already having a race win? Uh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling less great, though, because I got there's no winning in in the trucks. So I'm just going to have to keep putting good finishes together. Tonight was a good start. Daytona was a good start. Average finish of 1.5 for me isn't too bad, but I love Charlotte as well. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to being fast there, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, you did a phenomenal job here tonight. Uh, way to make up for the way yesterday went with Charlotte on the horizon, uh, both on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, well, really on Thursday for us here with uh, High Performance at the Roval. If there's anyone to shout out and say thank you to before you get ready for a very important week for you personally, the floor is yours. Congratulations on your first race win in the HTL Truck Series. Hopefully the first of many. Shout out Jacob Shamble, Changle for painting me up good. Uh, shout out Step of Stone and the work we put in. We didn't do much collaboration this week, but still shout out to them. It's fun racing and talking to them every week. Uh, shout out my beautiful girlfriend. She's watching tonight. And uh, shout out to y'all for throwing on this show. And uh, we'll go get them at Charlotte. Sounds like a plan. John Hagen, race winner here tonight with a lot of racing at the Charlotte Motor Speedway coming up in the next seven days. John, enjoy it, and hopefully we get to talk to you again very soon. Thank you. That was John Hagen, the race winner here tonight, as we get ready to bounce into the uh, race results here tonight. A phenomenal effort for John Hagen. Again, most laps led and had to come back to him to make the race win happen here tonight. Yes, he did. We thought we were kind of wondering the strategy to come in that early, but I guess he was a little bit wanted the challenge and he made it work, even though he took it to the wire, but he got the job done. So we'll take a quick look at the unofficial results here. John Hagen obviously gets the win with Jonathan Adams and Byron Jones rounding outside the podium. Going a little bit further down, we got Jeremy Breo and Nathan Step taking the top five. Pacey Wygent, Stefan Oberstadt, Scott Ponensky, Kevin Feemster, and Patrick Oberstadt round out your top ten. Moving further down the field, we got... 
Um, Joel Rodriguez, Lily Frazier, Dean Clavett, uh, Kelly Height, Christopher Pendel, Blake Henderson, Alfred Denny, Bobby Blowers, and James Wright, and Casey Ellis running outside your top 20, all also on the lead lap. Moving on to the next section, we got um, Greg Piller, Angel Santiago, Austin Mongold, Richard Gonzalez, Nicholas Don Francesco, Jonathan Smeal, David Pugh, Michael Saccone, and Alyssa Pelletier Sheriff. Obviously, we did say she had that little incident on the last lap there where she went around, and obviously showing the effect there, finishing P29, last car on the lead lap with Richard O'Day, last of the runners, in P33 laps down. And then we got Mark Parkhurst and Tyler Woodard rounding uh, 31st and 32nd of the cars that ran, both retiring at uh, both retiring and not finishing the race. So that is going to do it here tonight. Great race all around the cover. It was fun to have you back here again in the booth, Carmen, after your uh, little last week off. And next week, they are going to, let me just confirm the track they're going to here, Charlotte. Obviously, as we said, it was a military appreciation track and also military appreciation for HDL. So it is going to be Charlotte next week. They'll also be here on ABN1. And then after that, we'll also be Atlanta, also on ABN1. So both races will be on ABN1. Um, other than that, though, um, Carmen, is there any other series you want to promote while coming up here on the channel? Uh, we have a lot of stuff coming up here. We got Thursday, the AB and Hyper Formula Championship, also at Charlotte. The uh, Open Wheel Series going on at the Robo on Thursday. I uh, believe we have the week off for Saturday for the Eric's Truck Series. Uh, we have a lot of news coming out here over the next couple of weeks on AB and Esports.com. Uh, but really, it's kind of going to be it's just a Charlotte all week long from Thursday all the way through Tuesday. Well, if you like your Charlotte, you're going to end up getting a good uh, feel of that at the very least. So make sure if you like Charlotte, tune into that. But until then, uh, thank you for tuning in here on ABA1. Kevin Young here, Carmen Sienna. We are signing off. So thank you for tuning in and have a good rest of your night and enjoy uh, the rest of your Tuesday evening. So, so long and take care.